Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about how the move instruction works on uh, in Logic Pro. Okay, and so there's a couple of hints and tricks, and this is pretty similar to what you would see in RS Logics 500. They do a pretty good job here. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing is the move instruction is going to be in the move and logic uh, bin here. So we'll go ahead and grab that move right here and drop this in. And then for this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a switch in here and the switch that I'm going to use is going to be in the third bin. So I'm just going to throw that out here and I'm going to grab one uh, colon three zero zero and drop that in. And then just for ease of purpose, I'm going to make this a momentary push button. OK, now my source on this is going to be N seven colon zero. OK, and notice there's no forward slash there. That means we're talking to the whole word. OK, that means we're going to be using the whole word to actually calculate this out. OK, watch this. This is pretty cool. So as you guys see, in the as we talked about in the lecture, we can move things and you will do this in lab a ton to counter presets, to timer presets, to analog outputs, all sorts of things. OK, and so what we're going to do here is we're just going to go ahead and move this over to the output word. So we're going to control this entire output word right here. And to do that, we're going to go to our destination. We double clicked here. We're going to put output colon, output colon two. Now, typically we would put dot zero in there if this were RS Logics 500. But um, it will go ahead and convert that and it'll know that I'm talking to that whole word there. OK, so now what's going to happen is whatever information I put in N7, that integer file, which is really a storage location for words, um, it will get moved to my output two. OK, whenever I activate my switch. OK, so to get to your N7, we're going to close this out. We're going to double click on the in, on the N7 right here. If I close this out again, that will bring back up my lab equipment. OK, and I'm going to go ahead and, and I'm going and I'm in decimal. So I'm just going to type in a random number. Let's say twenty five thousand seven hundred and forty two. OK, and so now I have stored that. So when I go online here, I'll go ahead and download. Select run mode. That information is now right here. Notice it has not gone to my output yet. It hasn't moved to my destination because I haven't activated my switch. So let's see what happens when that does. I momentarily activate it and that information has now moved down to here. And if I go and I look at that word, that 16 bits right here, you can see that I have a number of things that are actually turned on right here. OK, so I just controlled that entire card. All right. And that's pretty incredible. OK, and I can actually move that live. I'm going to go to my data table files, <clears throat> go to my N7. I did that by right clicking up here and then finding my way through. Let's say I'm going to go. So I'm in my integer file. I'm going to change this to hexadecimal and I'm going to convert this to four F's. OK, which makes it uh, if I turn this to binary, you can see this goes all the way across here. It's all ones. Now notice not that value hasn't gone to my destination yet. And the reason is, is because I haven't activated my switch, which I'll do now. All of them turn on. OK, and I want you to remember that for the next video when we talk about uh, the masked move instruction. OK, when I demonstrate that for you here. Now, the last thing I'm going to show you here is how we can move information into a preset value. All right. And I've been talking a while about the on this, so I want to kind of move quickly here. But I'll go ahead and put a uh, I'll put a basic switch in here. Drop this down, deactivate the switch. I'm going to call this T4 colon zero, enter. 
and I'm not going to put a pre oh, I'll put a preset in here of let's say 100. All right. I'm going to open up my data table file. That's just the shortcut to do it. I'm going to go to my N7s, change this to decimal, and I'm going to make this 200. Okay. And so now what will happen is, well, actually, let me just show you. Uh, I'm going to go ahead, come here, and download this. Now notice I have 200 here. I still have 100, 100 here. So that's 10 seconds. So if I activate this, you'll see this count. And I'm not going to make you wait the full 10 seconds. You know how a timer works. So if I activate this right here, this preset will not change because I forgot to change my destination. Oh no, give me one quick second. I know you're sitting there thinking, Pat, you didn't change it. You didn't change it, but you can't hear me because this isn't live. My bad. Notice that I put T4 colon zero dot preset. That will send this word to the preset value here. Okay, so we will go ahead and download again, go into program mode. Again, if I activate this, it's just going to count. Now watch what happens when I activate this. Watch the preset of the timer. It went to 200. Okay. So now if I activate this, it will not be done for 20 seconds, which again, I'm not going to make you watch. So be aware of that. Now, if I wanted to be, I could put as many moves in here as well. I could have 15 moves and have this preset in whichever one activated last will be the one that it uh, goes to. Okay. This will work the exact same way for the counter preset as well. And look, I talked for 20 more seconds. All right. So that's an introduction to the move instruction.